And the Ranger we go. Up, up inside, Oscar. Hey, Timber, ready to go for a ride? Yeah, come on, let's do it. Get on up there. Can you get up there, Oscar? No? Okay, you can ride down there. You excited, babe? Yeah. Hey everybody, I hope you guys can see me okay. So, I'm down here at the barn and uh, we've got a couple Ferris mowers uh, that we uh, use quite heavily. Um, mainly this one here is the oldest one we have. Uh, that thing's, I don't even know, it's been here a very long time. Um, and then we've got a, a newer one that's maybe a couple years or so old uh, on the other side. This one here, uh, the big, uh, the big mama. This thing weighs like 2,200 pounds or something like that. It's a big one. Um, it's got a flat, and it's uh, kind of uh, a little bit frustrating. Um, we've been kind of dealing with this headache. It's you know gone away and come back and gone away and come back. So uh, I'm assuming either the tires dry rotted uh, and it's got, you know. Uh, some leaks somewhere or maybe the valve stem so uh, I'm gonna take this thing off the mower bring it up to the garage and uh, probably uh, cuss and swear at it with some tire spoons and see if I can get the tire off the rim and uh, maybe put a new valve stem in so uh, the success rate of this project I have no idea uh, I've changed a lot of ATV tires and dirt bike tires. Um, I've changed the caster wheel tires on the front of these things before. Uh, haven't had a problem uh, for the most part. So who knows uh, what these things uh, are going to be like. So I, just, I have a slight inkling of what it might be like, but <sighs> let's get to it and see what it does to me. trouble dog Jack is uh, temperamental. Yeah, so this Ferris is a, uh, I believe a 32 horsepower V-twin. The model number is 4500Z. I don't know if they make this model, or at least model number anymore. It's got a 61 inch cutting deck. 
obviously a triple blade, um, four wheel suspension, which, you know, for Ferris mowers is not an uncommon thing. At least once you start getting up, you know, somewhere in the, the mid size models. Um, we've had this mower for a long time and it was expensive back when we uh, first got it. I think it was like $14,000 or something like that. And that was, I'm not even sure. I thought we got this thing back in like, what's it now, so it's 2023. The thing's gotta be 15 years old. I could be wrong. I'm sure somebody uh, uh, out there that may be watching might have more knowledge and what uh, model years or for you know how long those models existed when they first came out but this thing's been a fantastic mower what an awesome machine super duper comfortable i mean you could spend a whole day on this thing and not feel any uh, aches or pains or bumps or bruises or nothing so now we got this thing off let's get back up to the garage and uh see what misery's really like All right, so I'm backed in here and um, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that yes, it is the valve stem. However, it seems to be the valve stem core. So that's a, that's a good thing. Let me get you guys, uh, I'm making you sick here, I'm trying to get that magnet to come loose. So you can see, or can you, can you not? Let's see if I can get you in there. So it's definitely the core. Now, <laughs> I think the bigger dilemma is where in the heck is my uh, core remover? <laughs> so I'm gonna have to find out where the heck that thing disappeared to, to see if I can remove the core, inspect it, make sure it's okay. If not, instead of tearing this whole tire at, off the rim, which, you know, taking the tire off typically isn't the biggest issue. It's breaking the bead. And I never look forward to that because there's always a chance of us destroying the tire in that process. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to see if I can find that, uh, that core remover and uh, take that core out let the air out of the tire and uh, while the air is coming out I'm going to inspect the the valve core and maybe I can just swap one out from a new one I have in the uh, in the toolbox I know there's one at least one in there somewhere so it just might take a little bit of digging
Well, I guess we're all set now. We'll have to see what happens come springtime. Maybe uh, it'll be flat again. Wouldn't that be exciting? All right. So that's going to be it for that. Um, again, you know, just doing kind of fill in videos really for now. Um, this weekend, I uh, might be, depending on if the phone rings on the project or not, but I might be doing some stuff um, with the excavator. The gentleman uh, and his father that I uh, had hauled that firewood processor for, um, their, their John Deere uh, skid steer has blown a hydraulic line. So they haven't even had a chance to run a log through the processor yet because they're down the machine. So there's a chance I might be bringing that excavator of mine to their property and helping them scavenge the trees that I guess they had dropped on the on the woods line there behind their house uh, with the intentions of putting them through the processor. So I might be there uh, dragging that stuff out of the woods and putting it up on the processor uh, live deck for them so that they can uh, continue their project. So um, one of the other things I thought you guys might be interested to know is this wagon here uh, is also going to be a future project for the channel. It's uh, not anything from what I understand uh, and what I see. It's not anything super old or anything. I mean, I'm <clears throat> kind of taking a guess at it. But it's an Amish buggy, uh, for sure, uh, from what I can see. And um, I don't believe it's got too much age on it. I mean, it could be 50 years old, could be 100 years old. I could be completely wrong. Uh, so, you know, the point, is, you know, what I intend to do with it is as much of a restoration as I can possibly do. The wheels... Um, I'm gonna have to get super creative with a way to bend, uh, steam bend up uh, <clears throat> the wheels, uh, or the material, the raw material for the wheels, if I want to, uh, you know, completely restore the wheels. The, the, there's a lot of the spokes that are blown out. They're not worth uh, fixing, and um, they're uh, they're they're pretty well misshapen uh, now. The the ring for the uh, rubber tire all still looks very good. All the hardware seems to be uh, there on the wagon, which is pretty awesome. So uh, uh, another thing you know, I need to acquire is one of those small sandblasting cabinets so I can take, you know, all the metal hardware and everything and properly, you know, uh, get it down to metal so I can get a decent finish on all of that. Um, <clears throat> and again, you know, if, if I don't wind up having to just, you know, go to Lancaster or something and acquire um, either the wheel uh, parts, like the spokes um, and the, uh, now I'm gonna have a brain fart now, the, the sections, of the uh, the fellows, that's what I'm looking for. The the fellows for the wheel, they're because they're segmented. Uh, usually, I think this is a a two piece wheel, so this one's got two fellows. Um, and for me to acquire those parts and then reassemble it myself, that's a possibility. I would rather do it that way, so I'm actually involved in the rehabilitation of the wheel part. So, but that's gonna be. Uh, that's going to be coming up whenever. I might even take a crack at, you know, redoing the upholstery. Um, 
and all the all the stuff is there everything is there structurally um you know the springs everything is all there all i have to do is maybe duplicate parts as far as the wood even actually the the stuff that i might not have to touch is the ash um the pieces uh of the uh undercarriage that are made of ash uh they have stood the test of time just fine so really all that comes down to is taking that stuff off sanding it all down reconditioning it a little bit and uh and refinishing it and putting it back on which is awesome so that that saves me i mean don't get me wrong that duplicating those pieces would have been a lot of fun for me uh however this is a you know for my first carriage um i don't want to call a restoration because who knows it could fall short of a full restoration but if it doesn't uh kudos to me uh but i need to be realistic about it um this does have the drum brake conversion kit so uh again like i said that's really one of the bigger things that leads me to believe that it was an amish buggy um now it could be in it could have been an old amish buggy that had the original brake system on it however i don't see any of the mechanisms for the original brake so there, there's there's things that i'm not seeing um that are leading me to believe that it's a it's a later year uh buggy but anywho uh, enough rambling about this you guys aren't going to see much of anything going on with this for quite some time yet again funds are everything um and it used to be that you know getting some poplar uh and stuff like that you know to rebuild the box and all that uh wouldn't normally have been a big deal it wouldn't have been a huge purchase but right now um any of uh any hardwoods uh are kind of kind of expensive and pain in the butt to, to get uh in comparison to what it used to be um so anywho um executed the tire crisis so that's done uh hopefully uh, it stays that way um, i don't know what they were so uh, upset about i mean it was only flat on the bottom you know uh but you know you can't please everybody so here i am down here beating my head against the wall trying to make a tire that's three quarter round you know full round so that they're happy but uh so that's gonna be it the only thing i gotta do is clean up my mess and uh that consists of a jack uh my impact driver and that's it so uh, i'm sure you could probably imagine what i'm gonna do with those so we're gonna call it good for that and um yeah that's gonna be it for today thank you guys very much i hope you stuck through it this far and uh i'll uh, i'll talk to you soon if you could like comment and subscribe maybe share it with your friends it'd be great and um oh another thing welcome to the new subscribers i've noticed that i've probably been in the past uh five days i think i've gotten something like uh eight or ten more subscribers which you know it's not knocking out of the park compared to the bigger fish in the pond but it's onward and upward and uh that's that's cool that's super exciting to us here at mount tammany ridge so it's uh keeping us moving forward and keeping us making content and uh Hopefully we don't bore you to death with this uh, yammering about things to come. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow, likely.